Live from the KMOV Broadcast Center in downtown St. Louis. This is News 4, watching out for you. Train cars going off the track, sparking a massive fire. Schools and homes cleared out as that fire sent chemicals rising into the air. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Claire Kelly in for Steve Savard tonight. And I'm Courtney Bryant. Right now, authorities are letting people back into their homes, but the cleanup and investigation into how this happened is only beginning. This map here shows you where the derailment happened in Dupo. This is roughly 10 miles southeast of downtown St. Louis. News for Russell Kinsall is across the street from the derailment. Our Ray Preston at East Carondelet Community Center, where authorities evacuated people. First, though, we begin with Russell with the latest tonight at 6. Right now, I'm standing on the east side of the Union Pacific Rail Yard in East Carondelet to give you a better idea of what that train derailment looked like and what's going on right now. Look behind me and you can see several of the train cars that derailed all twisted and turned off the tracks. Some turned over onto their side. And if you look closely through the chain link fence, you can see several of those train cars are charred black from that huge fire that sent smoke billowing high into the sky. The derailment happened around 1245 as a train was leaving the yard. When the rail cars derailed, a flammable liquid spilled out and caught fire. We're told it was flammable solvent used in paints and lacquers. The liquid spilled out and flowed into a storm sewer. That raised concern about the safety of people who live very nearby, so some homeowners across the street were evacuated. Firefighters came from all around the region to help fight the raging fire that created a plume of smoke seen by some 20 to 30 miles away. So this wasn't an easy fire to fight. We saw firefighters spraying some type of foam onto the cars in an effort to suffocate the flames. A person working nearby at the time saw a fireball when the cars derailed, and he described what he heard and what he saw. It sounded like it jumped off or something at first. Like it was loud, like you could hear the, the brakes, and then it just all boom, boom, boom after that. And then uh, seen a giant fireball out the corner of my eye, I looked over, and a bunch of smoke burrowing, and then it just started spreading down the tracks about five minutes after that. Let me tell you more about the activity out here. So there is an effort to remove parts of the train cars that have broken off and get them off to the side. If you pan over here, Chris Stolia, my photographer, you can see where they are using these cranes that have the red arms. They are working to lift some of these rail cars that are all mangled and on their sides to move them up and out of the way so that they can clear the tracks for other trains to use. But it's a huge cleanup that's taking place out here. It's going to take hours, if not a couple of days, to get all of this cleared away. And then they have to figure out why the derailment happened in the first place. Russell Kinsell reporting live in Dupo. Back to you. Our team coverage tonight at 6 continues out of Dupo. Ray Preston has now moved into a neighborhood that was evacuated, and people, Ray, have now been allowed back in. Well, right now, we're about a half mile north of where the train car is derailed. Now, this entire neighborhood here, this area, this is the Adams subdivision. It was all evacuated earlier, along with the neighborhood roughly two miles up the road north of where we're standing right now. You know, dozens of residents from the Stony Brook Mobile Home Park, again, Adams Subdivision, and Floor Acres were all evacuated. Several residents spent their time at the East Carondelet Community Center, which had been, or was converted, rather, into a uh, an evacuation center. That's where we talked with a longtime Dupo resident who says she first saw the smoke rising and then made her way over to the fire. I just happened to pull up where we, they didn't have the roadblocks off. And I was able to get out and take three pictures and that's all I could take. The, the heat was, I couldn't handle the heat from the from all the heat coming up in there. So I jumped back in my truck and by then somebody was at the end of the road and told me I needed to get out of there, which I understand safety reasons. I should have known better. I used to be on the volunteer fire department. So there are about 30 to 40 uh, residents over there throughout the course of the afternoon. Some were coming and going. They were allowed to bring their pets in. Several had pets with them as well. You know, this started at about 1230 this afternoon. It was just before 4 o'clock when emergency management officials came there and announced that the evacuation order had been lifted. So roughly three, three and a half hours or so that some of the people were there. Reporting live in Dupo, Ray Preston, who's for. Here's what we know right now about the chemicals involved in this train derailment. Union Pacific says the chemical is a liquid called methyl isobutyl ketone. It is a common ingredient in paint. According to the EPA, it can cause eye irritation, headaches, and vomiting. Firefighters tell us the thick black smoke was likely caused by burning rubber. 
That can also cause irritation if inhaled.